Um, it shows that uh, something, of course, has happened. And uh, I modeled for the artist Bruce Rapp uh, like in 1982. And uh, he uh, took a long time to finish the painting because it wasn't finished until 86. Wow. But uh, he, uh, he then... Uh, this is Bruce here, and this is his partner, David, and this is me. He took Polaroids of me, and uh, I don't know how he... I didn't remember him actually asking me to uh, evoke any particular emotion, but he definitely has captured an emotion there in this uh, facial expression of mine. And uh, so it really depicts... Uh, the death and destruction of what AIDS did and that he, I really hold that artists are shaman and that they can f see into the future oftentimes and I lost everyone in the AIDS epidemic, uh, my partners, my friends and uh, uh, and so he, uh, he foresaw that I would survive and that I would be one of the few. And, uh, and so it really, uh, really shows this. And uh, as a result of it, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult painting for me, uh, but it's also, uh, it's also very profound, yeah. Quiet on the set. <laughs> That's me. That's good. Yes. So you were in your 20s when you started corresponding with Tom. With Tom, yes. I was 26. Yes. And how did that all start? What did you see? You know what I did time? see, and I have still today uh, in uh, our Tom house, a copy of the actual uh, image that I tore off a, a wall of a bar. It was promoting a motorcycle run. And uh, I, uh, I was so moved by it. It was, and the image itself, uh, it is not a, a, a provocative image per se, but something, I almost feel like he had the ability to embed into works, even when they were reproduced poorly through generational reproduction, that he had somehow the ability to message to be able to communicate with the viewer, especially if they were young developing homosexuals and, uh, and communicate with them. And, uh, and I was moved by this work and I'd never been moved by art before. I, I didn't grow up with him and I didn't grow up with really art in my family. And, uh, but this piece had an effect on me. And so the next day, serendipity of it all, I met another erotic artist, and his name was Etienne, French, but he was actually a uh, Filipino-American, and uh, his name was Dominic or Judas. Mm -hmm. And I showed it to him, and I said, do you happen to know who this artist is? And he said, of course, that's Tom of Finland. And he, he said, uh, do you like it? And I said, well, I like it a lot, but the thing is that it affected me. Uh, and I've not had art do that, move me in a way. And he said, well, I have his address if you want to write him. So I thought, well, why not? So I wrote him a very simple letter, but I told him in the letter that his art had affected me, that it did, you know, like I said, uh, uh, emotionally had an impact on me. And so we started to be friends and correspond back and forth. And then I left New York and I went back to uh, the West Coast, to Los Angeles, and uh, I uh, then got a letter from him that he was going to come to America for his first exhibitions. And so I asked him very politely if I could host him. And so that's when it really all began, because I got to be with him for those weeks, and I got to witness how many, whenever we were at a public appearance, how many fellows were actually impacted by his work?
that he had given them this kind of positive, sex positive male uh, energy that they could be happy and well adjusted, loving and being part of the, the queer uh, community. And so I thought, you know what? This guy has done so much for us. I'm gonna commit myself and do what I can do for him. And so that's how it all started. I just started trying to fulfill his wishes that he hadn't had, like things in his bucket list that he had not fulfilled yet. And so he, he wanted to stop the piracy and so we started a mail order company. And uh, he wanted to have an art book, so we published an art book, the coffee table book. He wanted to have an archive, so we started a nonprofit. And that's how this all came about, was because we started this nonprofit uh, for him and our friends, our fellow artists, our uh, family of friends, they said, well, can we donate a piece of our art to your collection and just maybe we won't be forgotten. And so this exhibition... Because it was 1986? It was 84, 84 when we did it. And really 86, you're on the dot because it was really 86 when other artists were really sort of, uh, you know, wanting to really give to us because we were moving along with developing the archive. And, uh, and so it's really, this is the first time that we have brought our family of friends out into the world. They've been hanging in the house, rotating. You know, we have thousands of, of works now. And this exhibition represents the past and the present, you know, and hopefully will stimulate the future. And that, uh, it's artists in residence. It's some of the really all-time greats that uh, that represent the past, like along with Tom, friends and fellow uh, artists, and uh, and so it's titling all together is really about all of us together, you know, and and you brought the work also to the museums because it's in so many collections. Tom's work is in quite a few museums and that has been through um, through us donating and through other collectors giving to museums and so uh, it's now being scattered you know throughout the world and we have from early on we started to have exhibitions that would travel and we couldn't get into museums, so we would take galleries and we would uh, have works for sale and we would have uh, our works from our permanent collection. And they would, uh, we've been to Paris before. We've been to Gallery Richard, which uh, I don't know if they're even still yeah, here. They are. I oh, I will have to go and visit them and if they don't come today. And uh, they, uh, they uh, hosted us and uh, gave us a wonderful show there. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's been a long, it's been 30 some odd years. 37, but, right, yeah, something like but that. But it's really wonderful that, uh, that now today uh, we get to share our family of artist friends with the, with the world, yeah. And you do, yeah, it's great. And you do products. Yes, you, you know you did the, a collaboration with <clears throat> Spaster. With who? Spaster, the Spanish designer. Yes, that must be just coming up. Ah, okay. Because I Sharp. Yes. Let me introduce. Uh, this is my colleague and my partner. How are you? This is good. Uh, how are you? Good. S R Sharp and uh, Sharp. Your uh, real name. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and. Uh, your name again. Diane. 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 My apologies. It's okay. Um, she was asking me about Spaster. You did from... a collaboration. Oh, yes. Um, the uh, sweaters with the biker heads. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. They've been really well received. Yeah, they're great. Yes. And they uh, they did an ensemble with a large uh, scarf like poncho. Yes. Right. And a big, huge, long scarf. They're very creative. They're, they're wonderful guys. They took a very traditional image and made it something new and a great deal of fun. Yeah, I really liked it. Yeah. They didn't do underwear also, no? No, I don't believe so. Because they do so. underwear in their own collection. 
would have been and we continue to and the reasoning is twofold one is that um, we're not um, publicly funded and so we have to find ways to fund ourselves either through donations or through uh, licensing and uh, so licensing has been our life and, and uh, blood in the sense that uh, it has continued to help us run and, and our internal operations and keep us going. And, uh, and it also has turned into a, a perfect vehicle to let new younger generations exactly. know about us right. and to discover Tom and to then be curious and to start to research him and then it all the let the petals of the blossom open for them yeah and how is it in the community because you have all kinds of straight gay people that come and visit what's yes. the reaction let's say from some middle america kind of person coming in well it's it's you know it's hard to tell who our visitors are we have a lot of visitors we have students from university come by and it's hard to know what sort of appeals to them? What is their attraction? And I saw a gentleman and he was sort of middle-aged, sort of round and sort of bespeckled. And he was going through uh, uh, Tom's uh, works in the XXL book from Tasha. And I said, what are you getting off on? And he said, they're just having such a good time. So he wasn't looking at the couplings or necessarily what they were doing with each other. He was just looking yeah. at the faces and the smiles. And it didn't matter if it was men or women or men, men. He was just getting off of the, the energy. Yeah. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. Which and is that, the best. that is a common right. denominator in that when we've had exhibitions uh, in museums like in Finland, uh, uh, we've had families with baby strollers and they're just moving along through the works and, and smiling, you know. That's you know, we great. had, uh, actually, no I want to, I want to, re- <laughs> I want to say something about Rochelle Laurent, who is a contemporary photographer here in Paris. I don't know if she's well known or not, but uh, in 2009, when we had that exhibition at Gallery Richard, she was standing on the steps, looking down into the gallery, and smiling, just a gleeful smile on her face. And I could not resist but to walk over to her and ask her what was on her mind. (laughs) And she said to me, she said, here stands the works of a man who did not inhibit what was in his heart. And he represents freedom for all of us. And I was like, of course, taken back by that because she articulated what what is really the essence of it all, you know? Which is great. Yeah. I have one more question, like the documentary, biography documentary. Yeah. Did you have much input in that or? I wish we had more. In the biopic. Yeah. 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 Yes, it was um, a project It was produced by uh, Finnish filmmakers and we have been looking for a film about Tom and they came to us and you can imagine how difficult it is to make a movie about someone you know. Yeah. Uh, and after many discussions, many meetings, we worked very closely with them. We decided that it was to be authentic, if not accurate. Um, uh, a dramatic piece. Authentic, if not accurate. Meaning that, Meaning that if, if it couldn't be both, it would be better for it to be authentic. Right. Okay. Because we don't live our lives in three acts like a play. Sure. So we need, you know, to, to build and to have the arc of, you know, the theatrical part of telling a story. So things happen different years and we're kind of put together and several characters were taken and made into one. Okay. Which are yeah. Which is what movies do. Sure. So um, we wanted it to feel like Tom of Finland. And I accidentally read all the reviews, by accident. <laughs> um, but the film was shown in Palm Springs, and a friend of Tom's, uh, an old friend of Tom's, went to see the film in Palm Springs, and he said, I thought that was Tom on the screen, and that was the best review of all. Wow. It was not as explicit 
as the press and as the public had uh, uh, imagined it would be, and, and uh, as cutting edge, but it, the acting and the cinematography really uh, took care of, of uh, the deficits in other areas. Right. And so, in the end, we were able to stand behind it and be proud of it. Right. Which was great. Yeah. I saw it a while back. Yeah. One last question about your residency. Yeah. How do you choose the artists oh, that you... Hang me with the rope. <laughs> no. No. We have... It's very difficult. I mean, we have a panel. Uh, we, we review their uh, uh, proposition of what they want to do. Um, we look at the whole program and see how it can enhance what they're doing and what they're going to bring to the foundation. So we look at all the applications and, and we sort of... We have two at a time, so we want sort of uh, two different practices to have a conversation while they're there. So it's 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 looking at a lot of things, and and we've been so we've been so fortunate. We have. We've I had, mean, we right now we have uh, an artist from Poland, and uh, you he's an activist in Poland, and so you can imagine this is like a breath of fresh air for him in Los Angeles. You know, getting away from the intensity of what he uh, experiences in Poland, and uh, and also we have uh, a puppeteer uh, who is Basil Twist, who actually is uh, American. Basil Twist yeah. is that a real name? Yes, yes it is. Yes. He's actually Basil Twist the Third. Yes, it was his father's name <laughs> and his grandfather's name, and it is his real name. So, and uh, we have up and coming. We have an artist from Thailand and an artist from uh, from Beijing. And so if they get the proper documentations that they can enter the United States, then they'll be our next artist. And we have one from Greece that it will be coming That's in the fall. That's my dear friend, Constantino. Yes. yes. He works with me. Well, wow. he is, He, uh, you know, we're going to, we actually, he got a grant that uh, allowed him to do something within Greece. And so we, we have, uh, backed it off his uh, time that he's going to come when he's going to come and right. we're uh, looking forward to him very much he's a sweetheart yes he yeah. has a queer archives uh, yes festival. Right. Right. yeah and we want him to reap and take as much as he can from his presence and time at the tom house in our archives well, and I'm being sure in los angeles will. which is a like paris it's a creative hub and uh, a l young artists seem to do really well there in being nurtured. So that's really a good thing. That's exciting. Yes. We have, we, at some point, if you travel, we'll have to host you. That would be great. That would be wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay.